Hello, everybody. Welcome back to IHP Podcast. So today we have a special guest for you. But before I get to that, I just wanted to welcome back everyone who were listening to our last episode and where we were speaking to founder and creator Lucy Porter, and she was telling us her journey. Everybody, welcome back. I'm Gregory Filion. I am your host of today, and I want to pass it off to our next co-host. Hello, all. My name is Miles, and I'm your co-host. I'm currently working on my kin degree. Uh, I was an athlete. I also experienced a, a car accident growing up, so I can kind of empathize with a lot of people that had the similar experience. Now, we want to talk a little bit about what IHP is. And I'm going to pass it off to Lucy, the founding creator of IHP. She's going to give us a bit of background info. Hi, everyone. I am, again, super excited to be here. And one of the things um, I was really thinking earlier, how grateful I am that I have made it this far. I've grown so much and really, really uh, recovered uh, to this level. Um, and a little bit about me, I was in an accident um, a few years back and left there with a uh, mild brain injury and other challenges, and I didn't give up. I decided to take charge and actually embrace my challenges so that I could actually deal with them so that I could progress and have better quality of life. But through that experience, um, I didn't know what to do, who to turn to, who to trust, even after 30 years of working directly with rehabilitation centers and person, personal injury law. Um, and that is where the inspiration came to create Interact Health Pro so that I could provide support to those who suffer from acute and chronic pain and don't know what to do, who to turn to, who to trust, and what to do next. So I'm really, really grateful to be here and to have been able to make my dream come through by creating Interact Health Pro. And today um, I have a very special guest who is here to talk about her experience with Interact Health Pro. Her name is Roxanne McLeod and she has been a client of mine for just over a year. And uh, we have became very close uh, and I do with most of my clients because this enables me to better understand your needs and how I can support you better. So Roxanne, please say hello to everyone and introduce yourself, please. Hi, uh, my name is Roxanne and um, I am a client of uh, Interact Health Pro. Um, I met Lucy through uh, a lawyer after I had a personal, um, an act, a car accident and through a personal injury lawyer. And uh, I'm just here today to to talk about my experience and um, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. So, so tell us, uh, Roxanne, tell me a little bit about your background so we can situate, you know, I, I would have to say where you're from. Um, let's start with that. Um, do you mean where I'm from or my origin or where well, my, uh, just my background? Yeah, your background. So basically, okay. you know, where you live, um, you know. Okay. So um, I was. I live in Toronto, Ontario, in Canada. <laughs> um, I I was born here in Toronto, and um, I I work in the legal field, uh, and I've been do I've been in the legal field for just under ten years. Um, I own a business, and I'm also an instructor at a private college um anything else no i think that's great so so this is this is really amazing um that you're in the legal field and how we came together through you know your legal representative for your personal injury and and i want to know roxanne what was your experience like before you met interact Health pro and myself Okay, so I guess I'll start with just saying what happened. <laughs> um, so, as I said, I was running uh, my own sole proprietorship, um, providing legal services, uh, and I was also just starting to um, teach. Uh, when I was out one day with my husband, we were actually returning from a hike, <laughs> and um, 
we were at a stoplight, um, fully stopped, and an SUV just basically kept driving right into the back of my car um, at full speed because he said he didn't see us, um, which, I mean, I accept that. But <laughs> at the same time, it was pretty traumatizing at the time. I've never been in a car accident before. I've never had a personal injury before. So uh, it was pretty shocking. And um, I was in a lot of pain. Um, I went home that evening and uh, the next morning I had to go to the hospital. Uh, so which started off, I, I got in touch with the insurance company and they set me up with a physiotherapist who was not very helpful, not very good. Um, I ended up not continuing there. I went to my doctor who basically gave me pain medication, muscle relaxants, and, you know, um, like ox Oxycontin, I think that's how you say it, and things like that. And I, I don't like to take a lot of that kind of medication. So um, I took a little bit of it, but I was in a lot of pain. Um, I didn't get much help from the hospital. Um, and from what I've, what I've seen is that what I've actually learned, which I had no idea of before, is that when you have a soft tissue injury, um, there's just not much help. And I'm not going to say nobody helped me, but I'm just, I will just say that I wasn't taken as seriously as I would have liked because the pain was excruciating. It was debilitating and it changed my life completely. I, I want to I wanna thank you so much, uh, first of all, Roxanne, for sharing so much with us. And as an active accident victim myself, I understand the pain. We look normal, we look okay, and we are not. We are broken. And even our friends or family, nobody understands. They look at us and they say, get, your, get yourself together, you're, you're fine. And, and they, because we don't have anything broken, we're not on a stretcher, we're not in a wheelchair, we are experiencing pain. And here's the thing, there is no two, two same pains. There is nobody that experiences the feelings the same way. The bottom line is, this is your pain, you own it. And there is no comparison to the other persons. We all live that pain. We all go through it. And that is one of the hardest challenges because nobody understands that nobody supports us when you know so I, I fully agree with that and um this is my first experience um going through uh, an insurance claim going through this uh, personal injury you know going through a lawyer any anything like that i've never experienced i've never been in a car i had never been in a, even a car accident before so it was all new to me um and even though I was in the legal field, um, I did not reach out to a lawyer, a personal injury lawyer initially. In fact, I didn't reach out to a lawyer for almost a year. Um, well, just under a year. Um, but I kept thinking that if I could just, what I really wanted to do is just get well. And um, it was very, very difficult. My life changed completely from that day on. Um, I was experiencing so much pain that I was, I didn't want to take any of the, the harder medication um, beyond that initial, you know, uh, prescription. So I was just taking ibuprofen all day, every day, as much as I could, um, you know, that was uh, prescribed. I was basically doing what I could for work, but that's all I could do. I could only work a few hours and then I would have to rest. And that's what my life became. My entire life became that. Um, my relationships were affected uh, with my family. My, um, my, my job was affected. I wasn't taking on new clients because I just knew I wouldn't be able to, at that time, um, I, I wouldn't have the time or the wherewithal through the pain to be able to service them properly. I was still servicing some clients that I had. Uh, it's just um, trying to finish up some, some of those claims. But um, my life changed completely. And it, it was very tough time. Dealing with the insurance company was very hard, even though the adjuster was very pleasant. Um, it was very difficult. As, like I said, the first physiotherapist I went physiotherapy, 
um, firm. I went to, not, not firm, sorry, physiotherapist I went to. It was not a great experience. Um, it was, I wasn't getting very much personal help. I wasn't told what we were doing. I, it wasn't close to home, uh, which was very tough for me. It was tough to drive. I had some issues with driving. I was, I had always been a very strong driver and not scared. I was a very confident driver. And after the accident, I became very, um, it was, I was not a confident driver, put it that way. I was very nervous driving. Um, and I would, I would, I never had a problem taking the highway. I would, take sides I would take regular streets as opposed to the highway after that that kind of thing so my life really changed and so okay so this physiotherapist didn't work out and I kept looking for one but as I said my life became my my life became very small you know um it was just trying to do the duties that I had to do and then it was just trying to get through the pain I was in utter pain after that um and throughout it but after I did anything I was in more pain so, yeah, I, I just, um, I, I, I tried my hardest to try and find another, some treatment. When you haven't gone through a personal injury before, when you haven't been injured, it's very difficult. I've never been to a chiropractor before. I've never been to a physiotherapist. I've never been to pain specialist, nothing. So I really had, I was really working at a loss. Um, as Lucy was saying, you know, it's very tough to talk to your family and people around you about your pain all the time because they don't see it, you know, and even though it's debilitating, they try to understand, but they don't see any broken bones. They don't see you in a wheelchair. They don't see you on a stretcher. They don't see, and they, you know, it's very difficult to, day after day to complain about your pain. So you tend, you tend to start internalizing and isolating. And that's what I did. Um, so I wasn't really asking for a lot of help um, in terms of trying to find these uh, new new treatments. So I was trying to navigate this whole system by myself, and I was trying to go back and forth with the physio um, the insurance adjuster, and calling new places. And what I found is so many of the most of the places I called would not take um, car uh, car accident. Um, they they wouldn't deal with the insurance um, aspect of car, the car, whole car accident thing with that sad. So they didn't want to do the forms. They didn't want to fill it out. And then I would get back to my insurance adjuster and she would say, no, we just, we have to get the forms and we have to approve them and do direct pay. And I could barely function at that time. And so I was feeling just more and more despondent about it um, because I just, I couldn't see any light um, at getting any help. The pain was getting worse and worse because I wasn't getting any treatment. Um, my life got small, as I said, and um, I didn't see a lot of, uh, I didn't see where I, where I was going to come out of this. Um, I kept hoping that I would just get better with the rest, that it would heal over time, and it didn't. It got worse instead of better. So um, the next spring, I think, I reached out to one of my colleagues, and I asked her if she knew of a personal injury lawyer. I knew that because I work in the legal field, I knew that personal injury lawyers have a lot of connections to other uh, medical professionals. And that was my hope. That was my only hope is just to, I didn't really want to sue. I, that wasn't my intention. I just wanted to get back to normal. I wanted to live my life again. And um, since that wasn't happening, <laughs> I, uh, I, I reached out to this personal injury lawyer that I was referred to from a colleague. And I let him know, I said, like, I need help getting treatment because I, I, you know, I'm in such pain, I'm not functioning. And so uh, he was great. Um, he, I've had a really great experience with that lawyer. Um, I would say the be one of the best parts about that is meeting Lucy because Lucy um, through Interact Health works, uh, works for this law firm or with the law firm. And she was exactly what I needed. She was, it was a godsend. It was everything that I needed to start my recovery. Um, working with a lawyer is great. Working with Lucy, she did everything that I couldn't do. Um, even though I'm in the legal field, I was having a hard time looking at these forms, the OCF1, the OCF3. This, that. I, I didn't know what they meant. I didn't really know what how to fill them 
I don't work in that area. So I have very little experience professionally and I have no experience personally. So Lucy comes along and she is a wonderful person. She was, she was supportive. Um, she, she whipped everything into place in no time. She got my forms filled out for me. She started dealing with the insurance company. And that just was such a burden to me that it just lifted right off my shoulders. Um, she spoke directly to my to healthcare providers. She found a physiotherapist for me who these are wonderful people that are very close to home. So I, instead of having to drive, I could actually just take the bus down the street. And um, that was, I mean, Lucy thinks of all these things, right? Um, she really takes your, she took my personal situation and she really, um, she really listened, which was so important when, when you haven't been able to talk to anybody and nobody's really helping and you're in this pain and you're in despair and you don't know what to do. And here comes along Lucy and she's listening and she has the resources. She knows who to go to. She offered to talk to my medical, my, my personal doctor. Um, she talks with, she speaks with the physiotherapist and all the other healthcare providers. She filled out all the forms that are completely overwhelming when you are, especially when you're in pain and you can barely function. So she did all of those things. Um, she gave me a lot of support personally. Um, she was always there. If I had a question, if I called, she picked up the phone. If I emailed, she answered it right away. Um, I think personally, I think that every personal injury lawyer needs Lucy <laughs> or Interact Health Pro or something similar because uh, I have a soft tissue injury, uh, which kind of morphed into a couple of other things after a while, um, some things with nerves and other things. Um, and had I not gotten the help, I thought when I went to this lawyer who introduced me to Lucy, um, I don't know where I would be right now. I don't know if I would be functioning at all. I, it was just getting worse. Uh, so I started to go to physiotherapy. Um, and all I really had to think about at that point was making my appointments and re working on my recovery. That's all I had to do. She did everything else. Um, it was, I'm still in recovery. It's been almost two, it's going on two years now. But since I met Lucy, I have, uh, I have, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. I see improvement. Whereas before I didn't know what my life was going to be like. And I, I kept thinking, is this permanent? Is this my life now? You know, and what, what was given to me through going, getting that help and getting the treatment, getting the proper treatment, mm -hmm. um, and dealing with the insurance company because it's overwhelming <laughs> to do. It is so overwhelming because they have to do their jobs. You know, they have to make sure that you're injured, you're really injured and that you're, that they're giving you the benefits and all this stuff. But for somebody who's injured, it's, it's very, it's intimidating. It's overwhelming. It's like, it's, it's, and when you're in pain and, and kind of not functioning properly, you know, and me in the legal field, you'd think I would have known to reach out for help right at the beginning. And, and I didn't, um, I didn't really want to sue. I just wanted my life back, you know? Uh, so I didn't think about it and about that. Um, but I'm so glad I did. It was, it was, it was the best decision that I've ever made. And today I can say that I, uh, you know, I'm healing and I see, I see that light. I see a uh, road to recovery. I see, um, you know, I see uh, my life coming back. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you so Thank you. much. Sorry. Uh, go Sorry ahead. about that, Lucy. Uh, I will, first, I want to say, Roxanne, you're a really good speaker. You just knocked out almost all of my questions, which is <laughs> impressive. Uh, but I do I do have another question. You did mention that um, physically you took a hit, but I noticed that throughout your story, you're speaking about how you also took a little bit of, of a dip mentally from trying to avoid highways to not being as confident as driving with driving. I just wanted to know, and maybe some of the listeners want to know, has that, has that improved working with Lucy or do you see that your confidence beginning behind the wheel improving anytime soon? Yeah. Um, so it's, I'm glad you asked that question. 
Um, sometimes when you have an injury, especially a soft tissue injury, which is completely, it can be debilitating. In my case, it was. Um, your mental health is affected. It is affected. Um, you, your life changes completely. And you're talking about driving, something that I never thought twice about. You know, I never really thought twice. I was always for forever. I could drive. It's not. And now these are there's things that I'm thinking about now that I've never thought about in my life before. Um, and so I did. I managed to get some help. I was able to speak to somebody about that about um feeling more confident about getting about um kind of you know you have to deal with not only your physical health you also have to deal with the mental aspect of it because your life because you don't you it's just in an instant that your life changes um and you know you you don't expect that it's going to affect you so much um mentally as well and you know and i've always been the type of person to just push through everything, you know, that's me, <laughs> you know, I'll just get through it. And uh, what I found was I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it in this circumstance. So, uh, so I, so I also, Lucy also helped me with that. She helped to, um, she, she works with some people who, who specialize in, or they, they work with um, people who have personal injuries. Um, and a lot of the things I learned is that it's normal. It's normal. It, it it's not normal. It's a well, okay, normal's not the right word. It's um everybody not everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to find my words. Um it's it okay. is normal. It's normal for a, when you when you have an injury that debilitate and your life has changed, it's normal for your mental health to be affected. And that helped me because I as I said, I was just trying to power through, you know. My relationships were affected. I I gotten help with that I've been able to be a little bit more open with that um with the people around me um and so I do see improvement I am getting I'm getting more confident driving again um I still am not that confident driving on the highway but I'll get there you know um I do drive I don't drive a lot and and you know throughout the pan because of the pandemic um most people are working from home now so I, I haven't had to do those, any kind of huge commutes. So most of the time I just drive around my neighborhood just to do errands. Um, but you know, that helps too because it builds up the confidence. Then you can go a little further, a little further with that confidence. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to, um, to say that, you know, often people, when they hear about, you know, being assessed, for psychological, and this is what we do. We, 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 we get you a proper assessment so that there's treatment that's specifically for your needs. For example, in this instance, Roxanne's driving was really affecting her, but there's also, you know, you know, you don't sleep well at night because the pain keeps you up. You don't function normally during the day. You get down on yourself. You start speaking to yourself that language. I'm useless. I can't do this. I can't do that. And that leads you to major depression. Now, you don't have to have major depression to have post-traumatic stress disorder. It is part, and as you said, Roxanne, you said normal, it's not normal. It is normal for a person that was in an accident. You will have these challenges and it's important to address them because when you don't address them, then you have major depression and then that leads to bigger problems down the road because if your brain is not healthy, it can't heal your body. It's a very vicious circle. And this is why we ensure that we get you assessed properly prior to putting you into treatment. So they address specifically. And the insurance has to approve that, of course, as well. Um, and speaking of insurance, I just wanted to correct one thing. I don't deal with the insurance directly because I'm not a lawyer. But whenever there's a correspondence, a letter, an email coming from the insurance, it's confusing to my clients and patients where I can just say, oh, this is what that means. Don't worry about it. Oh, yes, you need to attend this. Yes, this is important for that reason. Although I don't give legal advice, I it's in black and white. You can read what it says. And sometimes just confirming what that is is really, really helpful and puts my person at ease. Yeah. 
right? Right. So, yeah. And I think that's yeah, I agree. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just, uh, you know, um, I just feel like Lucy is my <laughs> save all. So I guess that's why I said that she deals with the insurance. She deals with the lawyers. She deals with everybody, you know, um, but uh, most, mostly um, the support has been invaluable, I would say. Um, <laughs> I can't describe what it's like when you feel so alone and you don't know what to do and you don't know where to turn. And somebody comes along and they tell you that it's going to be okay. They're going to help you. And then they do, you know, and it's, it's amazing. It's just amazing. And, and I just wanted to touch on what you said about the mental health issue too. It just, you know, you do need to address that because what happens is for, in my case, is that very thing that you need to do is your mental health state is keeping you back from doing what you need to do, right? So um, I was in so much pain, I really couldn't look, but because of that, I was getting, you know, um, I, my cognitive functions, I was, um, my memory was affected, I wasn't sleeping well, all of these things. And, and so the things I actually needed to get well physically to do, it was almost, it was a block mentally to do those, to get there and to do those things. So when that burden was lifted from, having to do all these forms and to, and like Lucy just said, you know, being able to call her and saying, what does this mean? Like, what, what, can you explain this to me? And having her explain it to you instead of trying to figure it out, being overwhelmed with that process, I could really just concentrate on getting well. And that's what I wanted. You know, that's all I wanted. <laughs> Roxanne, I just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing. I mean, I can understand even years, decades after an accident, sometimes it can be hard to talk about. And I can share that personally. I know that it's not always the easiest thing to talk about the accident. So I wanted to say thank you so much for sharing. There's an excellent point you made that I wanted to emphasize that physical health and mental health are so closely connected. You know, whether it's your mental states being affected by your mindset, or maybe it's like a biochemical reaction that's going on. You know, it's really important that your mental health is in the most positive state. So then you can focus on things like your nutrition, your exercise, doing everything you need to help recovery. So I'm glad you made that point. They're so closely connected. It's so important for your recovery. So thank you so much for sharing that. It was really fantastic as well, how you shared your experience prior to IHP. And then you gave us such a glowing comment about once you found Lucy, once you got connected with her. So I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. If there's any closing comments from anyone, I'd love to hear them. But otherwise, I'll pass it off to Gray for our conclusion. I would like to, um, you know, I, I'd like to um, for you to tell us what's your big takeaway? Like, what's your big aha moment? working with IHP. Okay. So what I'd like to say, um, don't wait. <laughs> don't do what I did. Don't believe that you can power through it or it'll get, it's going to get better. It'll resolve itself. Don't do it. Reach out for help as soon as you can. Um, you know, as soon as it happens, because if it's not that serious, okay, well then you'll get better and you'll move on with your life, but you don't want it to get worse. Um, reach out to Lucy at Interact and, and she will, she'll talk to you. She'll tell you, um, she'll help you decide what your, your next step should be. Um, and she'll, she will arrange to get you the help that you need. And it's, it's just, she provides an invaluable service and there should just be more of you. That's all. <laughs> just don't wait. That would be my big takeaway. Don't wait. Don't wait. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, you guys really, you guys really said it all. It's not really much left for me to end it off with. I again, I just want to give some some thank yous. Thank you for thank you to Miles for co-hosting with me. I want to give a thanks to Lucy Porter for obviously starting this program, helping people out, and of course, giving me the opportunity to listen to such great testimonies. For example, by Roxanne. Thank you for coming and sharing your story. And I want to thank the listeners. For listening again. Thank you guys and uh, have a great day. Thank you all.